we end up being our own energy vampires and we keep our own energy down because we're so concerned about the things around us, the people around us, the circumstances around us. We allow that to lower our energy and we do that based on these stories that we tell ourselves. And these stories, they're just simply that, they're stories where we make ourselves the main character in everybody else's story. Welcome back to Create Your Fate. I'm your life coach, Meg Ellis, here to help you create your best life ever, beginning with your thoughts and your mind. So the other day, and naturally by the other day, I mean six months ago, but the other day I was uh, planning retreats. Y'all know I, I plan retreats. I do a couple a year. I do um, some day retreats and some global retreats that last a week long. And I'm planning one of these treats with a bunch of women. And we're all over at the one woman's house. And, you know, we have this great meeting. We're such like high vibe. We've been laughing. We're planning this amazing event. We're just having the best time ever planning this amazing thing for other women. The meeting's over and we're all leaving together. And the parking lot is across the street. And the way this street is, it's a residential street. And there's two stop signs on either side of these two apartment complexes because there's a lot of pedestrian traffic. And <laughs> there is this white truck at one of the stop signs, or he's approaching one of the stop signs as we are about to cross the street into this parking garage. And this guy, he sees us. And he actually sped up to only slam on his brakes and then honk at us <laughs> very aggressively, might I add, to, I guess, yell at us because for walking in the street. And then he just guns it and speeds off and peels out. And we all just were kind of sh stood there shocked a little bit, you know, like we had been so excited and we're planning this amazing event and we're laughing and we're with you know, amazing like-minded women. And then all of a sudden this guy just out of nowhere just dumps his rage on us and honks at us and causes this whole big scene and peels out. And we're all just standing there kind of like, what just happened? And one of the women I'm with, she just kind of waves and shrugs him off and says, ah, don't worry about it. That's his shit. <laughs> you know, we all just started laughing again. And it's so true. And I wanted to actually make a whole podcast episode out of this one thing because this, this piece of advice that I'm about to share with you that is based on this story, that's their shit, is going to change your life and you're not going to be able to unhear it. I know I wasn't able to unhear it whenever I discovered this. And it's just something that makes your life easier, right? So if you're somebody who wants uh, to not worry if people are mad at them or uh, be mad at other people or just be even just more carefree, this phrase can also change your life as well. And so I'm going to share the best piece of advice, and I'm going to loop in my little story here, the best piece of advice that you will hear today, this week, this year, maybe ever, that has nothing to do with you. This has nothing to do with me. This has nothing to do with me. This guy, right, he's blowing through, honking his horn, peeling out, getting angry. I could have gotten offended, flipped him the bird, yelled at him, slow down, a-hole, right? And I could have brought myself down into negative energy, but I didn't. You know why? Because my friend said, that's his shit. It has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with us. And a lot of times we cause ourselves to stay in negative energy, which is what we don't want to do. We want to vibe high. We want to keep our energy up and we end up being our own energy vampires and we keep our own energy down because we're so concerned about the things around us, the people around us, the circumstances around us, the people that we know, the people who we don't know, who just randomly honk at us and drive off. Right? We allow that to lower our energy. And we do that based on these stories that we tell ourselves. And these, these stories, they're just simply that. They're stories where we make ourselves the main character in everybody else's story. 
I made myself the main character in that guy who honked at us and drove off story. He's so mad about us, you know, all these things. No, the guy wanted to be an a-hole and then drive away. And guess what? He probably didn't think about us after that. But I could have chosen to stew on it. Do you ever stew on things? Do you ever think things might be about you, but you don't actually know and stay in a little bit of anxiety about it? Maybe you even get a little angry. I didn't like the way that person responded to me. Or there's tone in the email. Even people's actions, right? You get ghosted on a, a dating app or something doesn't work out with a, a romantic partner. Oh, they don't like me. They don't, don't like me. Well, no, that has nothing to do with you. That's their decision. And we're actually going to use one of my favorite books to talk about these reasons why we do this. And this book is called The Four Agreements by John C. Maxwell. And it talks about these four agreements that we can make to live a really meaningful and happy life. And the best news is it has nothing to do with anybody else, right? And you don't have to worry about any people driving, uh, almost running you over, honking at you and driving off. You don't have to worry about anybody, anybody sending you emails or anybody not doing their job or whatever it is that is affecting your negative energy. You don't have to worry about anybody aside from yourself. And uh, the book is called The Four Agreements. And in this book, there are four agreements. But today, we're going to be talking about two of them. And one of them is uh, taking things personally. And if someone tries to run you over in a parking lot and then drive off and peel out, yeah, that's really easy <laughs> to take that personally, right? We get upset and all our emotions just fight or flight takes over even. And it's like, oh my gosh, all these things. And then we can come back down, but oftentimes we, we choose to stay there, right? It's not always voluntary. You know, our emotions and our hormones just poop, you know, they kind of flare up to protect us. But then we can kind of choose, do I want to stay in this state or not? So I'm going to teach you how to release it by not taking things personally. And I want you to ask yourself, are you somebody who takes things personally often? Hmm. Probably so. If you're a human, the answer is yes. It's natural for us to take things personally. Again, because we make everything about ourselves. That guy, he was trying to hit me. No, he was just having a bad day and wanted to be an a-hole and then drive away. It has nothing to do with me. He would have done that with anybody who was crossing the street at the time because who knows? That's the point is we have no idea. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But here's the thing is... If you take things personally, not only are you choosing to keep your own energy down because you can control how you feel, but you become an easy target for people. And if you find yourself to be someone who takes things personally a lot, ask yourself, am I making myself the target? Because what happens is some of these people, they can sense that. They can sense your energy. You become an easy target and people will see, hey, if I'm going to get a rise out of you, sometimes that's all they want. I just want to get a little rise out of this because something bad happened to me. Let me take it out on you. And if I know that I can always go to you, dump my shit on you, and you're going to pick it up, right? I'm picking up your shit, and I'm going to assign truth to it. Wow, you're doing something to me. And it lets them get some steam off. Yeah, of course I'm going to do that. You become an easy target. But if you choose to not take things personally, right? Someone starts to throw their shit on you and you can say, actually, no, thank you. I don't like touching other people's turds. Uh, let me hand this back to you. <laughs> People will stop handing you turds. They will. So you have to stop accepting it. You have to stop allowing yourself to take things personally. It's not about you. This has nothing to do with me. So. Before we go on any further, I, I do want to make another agreement here while we're talking about agreements is what we're not going to do here is we're not going to use this uh, as a way to shirk any type of responsibility or take this into any passive aggressive behaviors. So, oh, that has nothing to do with me. No, we're going to take responsibility here. We're going to take ownership of our actions and we're going to take our power. OK, so we have the power to change our energy. We have the power to accept someone's shit or not. That's their shit. It has nothing to do with me. Do you know how freeing even just the phrase that has nothing to do with me is? Whew, 
That has nothing to do with me. Next time somebody upsets you or they do something where you're like, oh, you got that feeling. You know what I'm talking about? That, that, oh, that has nothing to do with me. See how you feel. So we're going to take responsibility for our actions, for our reactions, because every time we react to something, we assign truth to it. You want to give me your shit? Okay, let me take it. I'm assigning truth to what you're saying because I'm choosing to take it personally. So here's what we're going to do is we're going to take responsibility for our actions, but we're not going to dive into and feed into this hyper responsibility that we naturally are prone to. I feel responsible for everything. Why do I feel responsible for everything? Why? I don't know. I just do. Most of the time, and this is what I've learned a lot from coaching, is a lot of people walk around with this belief that says, I'm only going to be okay if you're okay. And I want you to sit with that. And if you're a journaler, I want you to journal about that. I am only going to be okay if you're okay. So if I believe that, then I'm going to have this hyper responsibility that everything is about me, that I'm responsible for everything. And because I feel responsible for everything, then of course I'm going to think everything is about me. And then I'm going to have this hyper fixation on fixing things has nothing to do with you. You don't have to fix anything. So stop taking things personally. Say, this has nothing to do with me. No, the tone in the email, nothing to do with me. What you're going to do is you're going to stop making assumptions. So that first agreement that John C. Maxwell talks about is stop taking things personally. You want to live a happy and a meaningful life? Stop taking things personally. And the second one goes right along with that is stop making assumptions. Why am I assuming that this has anything to do with me? Here's the thing about assuming is most of the time when we assume something, we assume the negative. And we do that to protect ourselves from our feelings and our emotions. But we assume negative intent. You have to ask yourself, why do I do that? Why do I assume negative intent? Hmm. Why do I think that things aren't going to work out for me? Why do I think automatically that this person is against me? And you have to start thinking, am I assuming the worst? Likely so. And I'm here to tell you that that's one of those made up stories that you, your mind is making up. It's not real. And so all you have to do is just slow down and say, is this real? Is this assumption real? Or is it based on something that I think might possibly happen or have happened? If you're going to assume a negative story and you acknowledge that it is just a story that you're making up, I want you to run it back and create the opposite story. What would the opposite story be? Well, it would probably be something that's good. Maybe in Janet's email, that had serious tone, and I know she hates me, and I know she's mad that I took this project when she thought she deserved it. I know she's still mad at me from last week. No, no, no. You're taking her tone that you're assuming that she's having. You are assuming that she's mad at you. And I'm going to allow myself to take that personally. Oof. Because I'm assigning truth to it. See, I knew she's doing that. She's being passive aggressive. She doesn't like me. She doesn't want me to have this role. Hmm. Okay, that's one story. That's probably causing you not to be in the highest energy that you could. If I'm assuming that made-up story, can I assume a different story? What is the opposite story? Or what is a possible opposite story? Well, maybe she just got stuck in traffic and was late to work, and now she's just trying to catch up on her emails, so she's just being really quick and short. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Hmm. Okay, well, does that outcome, does it make me feel better? Yeah, because it's not about me. I'm not assuming anything. I'm not taking anything personally here. 
And guess what? It's not my responsibility to assume how she feels about me. It has nothing to do with me. Her, how she feels about me, has nothing to do with me. You know when it does have something to do with me? When she takes her own responsibility to tell you, hey, this made me upset that you did. Then that has something to do with you. And maybe then, maybe even not. But you can always have a conversation and you can spend your energy on it. Then. But all these things that you're making up, that has nothing to do with you. And a lot of times we put ourselves in, in other situations. Again, they have nothing to do with us. We assume things. You, you hear that phrase, the, what does assuming do? It makes an asset of you and me. But here's the thing is, it's also, if you're an efficient person and you like to get a lot of things done very quickly, uh, assuming actually slows you down. I want you to answer this. What is the quickest way to get the most accurate information? Asking. Asking the person. But a lot of times we don't do that. We just stay in our assumptions and we stay in our taking things personally. And that's where you're actually doing yourself a disservice. Just ask. And here, here's the thing is when you do go to ask, this is what you're going to do. You're not going to assume negative intent. Oh, they probably didn't do this. You're going to assume positive intent. That is one of the best things that I learned in my NLP certification course, is assuming positive intent. How often do you assume positive intent? Maybe the person likes you. <laughs> maybe they were just late. The guy who, who cut you off, maybe he's taken his pregnant wife to the hospital. Who knows? But we never assume positive intent. We automatically go to the negative. So I'm telling you, it is possible for you to fight back and think positive intent. So here's what I'm gonna do. This will instantly improve your communication skills. I bet you, you are going to either your, your partner or your kid or an employee or somebody on your team with the attitude of, I think you didn't do this. Did you do this? Well, I'm a, that's negative intent. I'm assuming that you did not follow through on something that you said you would do. Did you do this? So how can you rephrase that by assuming positive intent? Hey, when you did this, did you find that you needed any help with anything? I'm assuming positive intent. So now this person, now they're not going to take it personally. Well, you know, they're assuming I didn't do this, right? You can kind of start to see how this can, can be this like little trap, the, the circle, right? So I'm going to assume positive intent. I'm going to assume that nobody is out to get me. I'm assuming that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I can phrase my follow-up questions, my check-in that way. And when they don't do it, when they come at me and they dump their shit on me, guess what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to take it personally. That's on them. That has nothing to do with me. And because I'm going to deprogram myself from feeling hyper-responsible for everybody else, because I believe, hey, guess what? I can be okay even if you're not okay. You cannot be okay with something, but I'm still going to be okay. It comes down to that. I'm going to be okay, even if you're not. I'm not going to try so hard to fix everything. Because guess what? It has nothing to do with me. That has nothing to do with me. So you, and the more you say this, you're going to find that you keep putting yourself in these stories. You keep putting yourself in other people's stories. And guess what? Nobody else is writing you as the main character in their story. Nobody. Not one person. The guy who almost hit me in the parking lot drove off. I guarantee you he hasn't thought of me since. I am not the main character in his story. Because here's the other thing. That has nothing to do with me. But also your shit. That's your shit that you can throw onto other people. Now I'm throwing my shit onto you. I'm assuming that uh, this email's about me. Oh my God, Why, I can't believe your negative tone in this email. You don't like me. You don't think I should have gotten this and you start assuming, right? But that's your shit. Now you're dumping it back on other people. That is your shit. You gotta keep that to yourself. You gotta rein it in and you have to realize that your brain absorbs less than 1% of the information out there. And that 1% that you choose to remember and hone in on, it's based off of everything that has happened to you in your past experiences, which is basically just a big way to say everything that's happening to you, like your life, that's, that's your life. Your life is about you. It's not about anybody else. 
just you. All these things that are happening, this email that comes in, right, or this person who, who almost cuts you off or hits you in a parking lot, that's a mirror. What is this showing me about me right now? Everything that I'm choosing to notice in this 1% of things that I notice, that the 1% that I choose to focus on, what is it showing me about me? Well, she's got this tone in her email. She didn't want me to have this job. She wanted it. Well, no, that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> oh, I realize this is coming up. Let me take responsibility for, for my story, right? I'm, I am the main character in my own story. What story am I writing for myself? Do I like it? Doesn't sound like I like this story. No, I'm going to sit with myself and I'm going to say, oh, you know what? This is my shit that I'm dumping back onto the other person. And I'm going to sit with myself and I'm going to think, hmm, what is this telling me about me? Well, it's, now that I'm being honest with myself, it's telling me I'm a little insecure in this, in this project role. Right? I, I, I don't feel like I'm quite ready for it. And she is just a mirror showing me how I feel about me. Because your life is about you. You are the main character in your own life. And you got to realize that, oh, this is my shit. I don't want to put it on anybody else. Because I don't want to pick up anybody else's. I'm going to be responsible for me, just me. And one thing you have to realize is when people are making you upset and you're taking things personally and you're assuming things that are, are negative about people and situations and you're accepting other people's shit and you're throwing your shit back, right? It gets real messy. You have to realize these people who are making you mad, they're not making you mad. People do not trigger you. People show you what your triggers are. You already have them. They're that mirror saying, hey, this is your trigger. Bing. Right? This is your little insecurity about this project that you just took on. Bing. Oh, man, I'm triggered by the tone in her email. No. Your, your trigger is that you're insecure and you're assuming negative intent on their actions to make yourself feel better. It's what we do to make ourselves feel better. But in the end, guess what it does? The exact opposite. Nobody feels better. Nobody. So doing these things can actually help you lead a, a more carefree life when you're not so caught up and other people's shit and throwing your shit back, right? It's like, no, I, I can not be so mad at people all the time. And guess what? I can stop being paranoid that people are mad at me. That has nothing to do with me. So just practice it. That has nothing to do with me. See how it feels. And you really have to disconnect the emotions behind it too. That has nothing to to do with me and I'm not going to insert myself into something that has nothing to do with me because why would I no I'm not doing that it has nothing to do with me it's freeing it is freeing to know hey I'm going to be okay even if you're not okay but that's on you and it has nothing to do with me mm -mm, that's it no I'm not going to insert myself into your story guess what I'm going to work on being the best main character in my own story. That's how I want to live my life. That's how I'm going to be carefree. That's how I'm going to have less stress in my life. That's how I'm going to stay in that positive energy, just focusing on me, not their shit. I trust they'll figure that out. And I'm going to focus on me. So that's all I got for you today. I hope this episode resonated with you. If it did, I post content like this all the time. So be sure to subscribe, follow, send this to a friend who you also think might benefit from this. So that's all I got for you today. But of course, if I could leave you with just one thing, it's this. Expect good things always and they will happen.